Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Life in an Ancient's Cam Radio. So, I know it can be incredibly stressful sometimes to deal with everything going on. I know that I have a lot of stress with dealing with all the life events and everything going on. It feels like it could be incredibly hopeless, but you have to remember that you are a mighty champion, that the Lord is there always giving you the strength that you need, and that you will always succeed when following him, that when him you cannot fail, that you just need to continue to pray for him, follow him, and that he will not fail you. Even if you fail him, he will not fail you. And do not rely on other people or rely on the world, but always rely on God. Amen. Okay, let's just begin this time with scripture. Well, good morning. Ah, forgot my, forgot my mic. There we go. Good morning and welcome to Life of the Nations Cam Radio. I'm Pastor Jen and those are our children, David and Susie leading worship and 
more importantly, what we want to do <coughs> is glorify the Lord. We want to open the heavens into our home and into your home as well. And, uh, you know, this morning I was up early, about 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, the Lord awoke me because I knew that this morning was a special morning we were going to be having. Uh, a worldwide global day of prayer specifically for the United States for this upcoming election and I said I can't miss it I can't miss it live uh, and uh, I did I got up uh, sat on the sofa and blurry-eyed began to pray and so that's what we need to be doing uh, our, our church specifically for the next 40 days is going to be doing a uh, campaign where we're going to be praying and interceding for uh, our nation and this upcoming election. Uh, so join us every evening at 7 p.m. on uh, Facebook Live. We'll be on there. Uh, and you can join us by Zoom as well. And so I'm excited. I'm excited to be praying for our nation. I'm excited to see the changes that God is going to make. Uh, I'm excited because uh, when I was praying this morning, God gave me the vision of... Um, <clears throat> A bunch of a whole bunch of people, everybody, all over the world, globally, we're all linked together, and we were forming this massive wave, and that wave was going to overcome all the darkness. It was going to wash it away, a tidal wave, cleansing anything that is dark that needs to be cleansed in our nation, and lifting up the future leader that we have for this nation. You know, God is not... Um, stopped loving our nation he's never stopped wanting to be a part of our nation and so heaven's already chosen the right leader for our nation so what we as christians need to make sure we do is tune into heaven listen to heaven and then look at the two candidates and decide which one has policies that are in alignment with heaven who is seeking god who is seeking god with all of his heart so the united states is the trigger point um, we're praying for our nation specifically over this upcoming election, like I just said. But the truth is that the heart and soul of America is on the ballot. Uh, and I got those words from Intercessors for America, and I truly believe that is exactly what it is. Either we vote in an America, a leader that's going to lead America back to our original roots and even deeper into what God has already de wanted and already desired for our nation, or we're going to you know, go into what's called the agenda of the Antichrist and just go ahead and go with the witchcraft spirit that seduces and entices us and leads us into everything that the book of Revelation tells us will happen. And we can already see it blooming and blossoming everywhere with its ugliness. Uh, so we want to make a tidal wave to destroy the darkness and bring in the light. Isaiah 59, 19 says, in the West, I consider myself Part of the West, living in California, people will respect the name of the Lord. I just claim that as ours here in California. We, and, and for Oregon, especially Portland and Seattle, we will respect the name of the Lord. In the East, they will glorify him. And Pastor uh, Nick is from Sweden, so we proclaim that for all of Sweden and all of Europe, the continents of all of Eurasia and Africa, that's all East of us. Uh, any place in, in the Americas that is east, that they will glorify him. And for he will come like a raging flood tide driven by the breath of the Lord. I proclaim that in this election we will see a raging flood tide uh, that will be driven by the breath of the Lord, bring healing to our nation. The Redeemer will come to Jerusalem to buy back those in Israel. And I, I say Israel, I say United States. We're linked together with Israel. Every nation that supports Israel is going to be linked to the promises of God. So I link our nation up. And so it says, who have turned from their sins, says the Lord. So there's a time coming very near in our future. I believe that each part of us are part of that time. And we're going to be called to choose a side. The United States is at the brink of economic and spiritual collapse. I think we've seen that with the interest rates. Of course, the interest rates just got lowered, which was good. But that doesn't change the fact that we've been just basically, what is it? Printing up money. It's just a lot of print up of money. And pretty soon, the whole economy is going to fall. It's being propped up right now, but it's going to fall. And... Uh, Spiritually, we are in the brink of falling as well. We are just an absolute spiritual mess. Um, this weekend, we had so much excitement. We were going to watch this movie. We put it on, 
it's the fifth in a series and we were like oh boy this is going to be great and and this gal at my daughter's job and she works at a christian daycare so everybody's supposed to be christian there was like i watched that four times at the movie theater and i remember thinking okay it must be really good and she thought it must be really good it was so dark there was so much darkness in this movie so much corruption uh, so much spirit of witchcraft in this movie that we had to turn it off and we said we will never watch that again. It was so sad. And so that is how I think we are at spiritually. We're just so enticed by these movies or these stories and, and we're just thinking, we think that because it's got some sort of supernatural element that it must be really good. But we need to listen to the Lord's voice. Habakkuk 1, 2. How long, O Lord, must I cry out for help, but you don't listen? Violence is everywhere. I cry, but you don't come to save. And Habakkuk was just speaking out from, you know, probably 2,000, 3,000 years ago. But we today can cry out those same exact words. How long, O oh Lord, do we cry out for help? I feel like I have not stopped interceding for this nation since the 2020 election, and I continue to do so. No matter what happens in this upcoming election, we will continue to cry out to the Lord because we believe in the promises of God. We who have heard the call of the Lord and believe in Jesus Christ, we have to decide to live our lives either according to God and we have to wake up to this enormous battle that's raging in the heavens over our nation. There's an atmosphere that has been created at the global level. And the United States, is the, in, the, in this upcoming election, is the trigger point. You know, our true citizenship is not of a certain country. Uh, not American, not Mexican, not Swedish, whatever country, Canadian. We are not of this nation any longer. When we give ourselves to Christ, we are now citizens first of the kingdom of heaven of course in the natural realm we are citizens and so we will get out and vote we will vote uh and so philippians 3:20 says we are citizens of heaven and so as citizens of heaven and citizens of the nation where you belong you need to get out and vote <laughs> if you are that a citizen you know three summers ago um Pat pastor nicholas he blessed our family and purchased an hvac system for our home I was so incredibly happy to have a cold, to have cold air pumped into this home whenever I needed it, and I need it often. And this air conditioning system is throughout the house. If I turn it on and I desire it to be at 75 degrees, then the machine turns on and the home is at 75 degrees. And it changes the atmosphere in the home, because when it's not turned on, it becomes very, very intensely warm and hot and suffocating. The AC keeps our home dry, cool, and comfortable. And to keep this nice atmosphere, we keep the doors and windows closed. We have a nice filter that keeps the air clean. We create an atmosphere by our actions, right? Right now in the world, there are atmospheres that are being created. So many of us are asleep. Like I mentioned, this little girl that's part of this teacher that's part of my daughter's uh, daycare. She's one of the teachers there. We're asleep at the wheel, and I have to pray over that whole church that she belongs to. I said, well, how could we not be aware of the devil's agenda? That he is moving in every place that you don't pray, and you don't intercede, and you don't take over for Christ. You are letting the devil move in, and he'll take over. He wants to keep moving in to every single uh, territory, into humankind, and he wants to advance his kingdom and agenda. So what is our position as a citizen of heaven? Our job is to push back and keep a clean atmosphere with our words, with our prayers, with our daily agenda. <clears throat> this past weekend, like I said, we borrowed this movie. And so with the realization that every movie and every video and with all the music that you listen to, all of it can affect your way of creating an atmosphere in your own home, an atmosphere in your own life. If all you're doing is looking at reels ad nauseum and they're all just full of perversion or they just are very light, but they don't have any depth and you're really just wasting time, you need to realize that you're creating a spiritual atmosphere that's drawing you in, captivating your eyes, captivating the eye gates, and you need to wake up to the fact that you may be, it might be time for you to be praying right that moment, interceding. 
maybe for the nation, maybe for just someone. This morning I began praying over Austin, Texas and my brother. Why? Because I want to constantly be ready to listen to the voice of the Lord. And oftentimes the devil will entrap you, entice you with something, <clears throat> something that will, some little light, and it's a lot of times on our phone, distractions that will stop the spiritual atmosphere that you should be trying to create. Revelation 8, 3 and 4 says, And another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer, and he was giving much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. Our prayers are the incense in heaven. And the smoke of the incense, the prayers of the saints, rose up before God from the hand of the angel. So angels are there. They're all constantly worshiping the Lord and they are listening, listening for the prayers of the saints. Are you lifting your voice for prayer? Or are you letting your eyes and your whole being and your, and your heart become darkened by the spirit of this world, by engaging with what is fascinating instead of and, and, and the movies that are drawing you in with their witchcraft spirit and their and their agenda from the Antichrist, really, because what is it? It's it's a substitute for God. You're saying I'd rather watch this basically demonic agenda movie instead of being uh, in God's presence. So let's consider the nation. What kind of atmosphere do you think is in our nation today? You can think of the United States, you could think California, but maybe you're from another nation, maybe Sweden, maybe Mexico. I mentioned those two places because uh, we're, we're constantly engaged with those two nations, but you could be from anywhere. What kind of atmosphere is in your nation? Is it one that brings a cleansing to the stench of sin? Do you recognize your position in this world as an agent of change where you can bring a change because we are at the brink right now of seeing the United States collapse into darkness and the United States, let me tell you, is a trigger point. The current administration of Biden and Harris, they welcome drag queens into churches, into the White House, into schools, into libraries. They say yes to the witchcraft spirit. Uh, and let me tell you that the witchcraft spirit wants the transgender. They like it when men dress up as women, women as men. They like that we're taking, making our children take hormones, cutting off body parts. They love that. That is a worship to that d deep and dark witchcraft spirit. That, that's even, I mean, that can originate back in the, like a veil, uh, what's it called? Yes. Uh, his, uh, his wife. Was called. Yes, yes. Uh, um, I can't remember the names, but the deep, dark... Yeah gods of the past from Egypt and from and from the Amorites and the Amalekites it's the same dark and demonic spirits that the the temple prostitutes you hear about them in Rome and in Greece when I went to visit they talk about temple prostitutes in the Bible these people these women were often not women they were men and you were to go and have sexual relations with them and then when your firstborn was born you were to take them to the altar and worship the Baal with your child's death and that is abortion today. That is the whole push from the drag queen, uh, not drag queen, but the whole uh, transgender, homosexual, lesbian movement, the LGBTQ2+. And so we see a demonic spirit entering our nation. And I pray for each one of us because we are image bearers of an almighty, amazing God, each of us. But the devil's agenda is to dehumanize us, make us go back to the animal, or if he can, train the whole gender fluid, he wants all of that. But I was thinking like, I mean, uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned that before, but when they had the DNC that they had like an abortion clinic outside. I did mention that. Okay, yeah. The Democratic Party, when they had their big conference in August, had an abortion clinic smack right out in front, purposely to give anybody who wanted an abortion to just come on in. It was pills and then vasectomies if you wanted that. So they're constantly, the devil always is looking to stop the seed of life from flowing in people. They, he doesn't want humankind to reproduce. He wants us all to be uh, engaged in animal-like behavior, if possible, to destroy us, to bring us to suicidal, to depression, whatever, anything to get us off target because he knows that our voice carries an agenda from heaven. A little child's cry, a baby's cry brings an agenda from heaven. 
It's crying because heaven is speaking. Uh, it's listening to all of us, the image bearers of God. And, he, and when a little child cries, it's crying for life, life. And that includes uh, what everything you see in nature is crying out for life. And so we can see, for example, like in the opening ceremonies in Paris, the closing ceremonies, this is a dark antichrist spirit that was trying to take ownership of what we Christians consider sacred. For example, they mocked the Last Supper. That was the time when there was a communion taken, and communion was taking the bread and the wine, the, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ. These are essential to, uh, to Christianity, to the belief system that we carry and they were mocking it. They were destroying the innocence of children by having a child there, by having a, a transgender man, but he was, parts of his, you know, his genitals were sticking out right next to this little girl. What are we trying to do here? But bring in this antichrist spirit, perverting the sexual act that is meant to be framed within marriage, only between a man and a woman. And this stench of perversion and corruption went to every nation because people, families were watching the opening ceremonies. The point of it was to create an atmosphere that's conducive to the Antichrist spirit, to normalize it so that you would say, oh yes, I want to watch that. That's okay. It's art. It's all right. It's not based on the Last Supper. No way. It's based on Dionysus and blah, blah, blah. They come up with all these scenarios. I saw the image of Dionysus. Uh, whatever they talked about, I saw the work of art, and I saw the Last Supper, and I saw what I saw. I'm sorry, but you are, you are blinded and foolish to think that that might be true. In every generation, we will find the devil trying to usher in his reign. In the book of Esther, we see Haman. He's going to destroy the Jews and annihilate them. Anytime you see chaos, you see the spirit of death, you see laws that make death legal, like abortion, that brings in an antichrist spirit. That brings in the devil's agenda. He wants a global reign worshiping him. In Ephesians 6.12, it says we're not fighting against flesh and blood. That's why we, you and I, are so crucial with our voice. We're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. We're called to be agents of change. And so your job, believer in Christ Jesus, is to change the atmosphere, to create an atmosphere that will break the darkness of the enemy. Because the United States, as the United States goes, the whole world will go. And so we're pulling back. We're pulling back and saying no to the, this, this demonic agenda that is described in vivid color in the book of Revelation. Matthew 11, 11 says, I tell you the truth, all of all who have ever lived, and this is Jesus talking about at, at this point in the, in the history, 2,000 years ago, none is greater than John the Baptist. Okay, so who was John the Baptist? He was a forerunner of Christ. He paved the way for Christ to come. He got into people's faces. He spoke truth into their lives. He, he led them into baptism. He was a ferocious man on fire, passionate for Christ. And look at what the next part of the verse says. Yet even the least person in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. What? That one blew me away. I'm a citizen of heaven and I am the one, I don't consider myself to be like amazing and everybody knows me and I'm just so popular. No, but I, maybe I'm one of the least people, but I'm a citizen of heaven and that means that I'm greater than John the Baptist. Why? I carry the Holy Spirit. I carry the Spirit of Jesus Christ in me. And I have the power through Christ to destroy the work of the devil. I have the power to be that agent of change. And what did John the Baptist do? He paved the way for Christ Jesus. What are we to do as citizens of heaven and agents of change, but to pave the way so that the soil of people's hearts is ready to receive the light of Christ, ready to receive and be, and be radically transformed by Christ. And I believe that when a true revelation of Jesus Christ comes into our lives and we receive that truth, we won't be blinded or deceived or confused any longer as to who we belong to, what our job is as citizens of heaven, and consequently as agents of change. And I think kids today want to be agents of change. 
They're excited about these movies because they think this is exactly what they're supposed to be doing. They want to be an agent of change. They want to be super, super powered. Matthew eleven twelve, 12, the next verse, and from the time John, of John the Baptist when he began preaching <clears throat> until now, listen, citizens of this world, citizens of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and violent people are attacking it. When John the Baptist came and people began to repent and then they turned to Jesus and then we see this worldwide movement and we today are disciples of Christ because of that radical transformative moment on the cross of Jesus Christ where he died for our sins and rose from the grave and so the devil has been trying to shut us up and shove shut everything down. He wants to shut down the chosen people of God. We are grafted in to that um, tree of, of the, the chosen Israelites. And the cho Israel was the chosen ones. And, and God describes us as an olive tree. And we are grafted into that olive tree because we gave our lives to Jesus Christ. And so there is an avalanche of deception falling on people today through the airwaves, social media, TV, through people we thought we could respect. Some pastors, they're unified in pushing one agenda. And this is the agenda. Let me tell you, I'm going to say it really clear right now, that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. And only Harris can bring us joy and peace. The media has turned Harris into a spiritual leader. Famous celebrities and news outlets call her Kamala a joy. She is a joy. And what does this bring but confusion, deception, and blindness to the truth? Isaiah 59, 4 says they trust in confusion and speak lies. I don't care what the polls say. I don't care what is the agenda to push her through and that we're just going to have to give up and let the Democrats have their way because there's a trifecta of power through this nation and we're just never going to be able to see this because of, yes, because of the fraudulent elections. Uh, but the United States is the triggering point. For the Antichrist to either usher in his reign and have worldwide dom domination or not. Our election will determine that. I really truly believe that 2024, I have heard this and I believe it's true, is the last true election that we will have. If Harris gets in, we will see a worldwide domination. We will see the United States go into economic collapse and we will see these, this world been, be overtaken by a, this demonic rule because because we are meant to have a global worldwide revival for Christ that is what we are to have and I believe that in this second uh, what I've heard from the prof prophetic word is that in the second term of Donald Trump we are going to see a worldwide revival breakout nation after nation are going to turn to Christ Every when I think about our city, I don't think, oh my goodness, they, they're you know they're all in their little churches and their little denominations, and no one's ever going to change. And no, I think that I'm going to hear pastors calling me. I'm going to hear people on fire going, "Hey, we've heard that you speak about the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. We want to hear from you, and I'm going to be ready to go speak." And pastors are going to be all of a sudden have that revelation. They're going to begin preaching this in their churches. That is what I believe. That is what I'm praying for. That is what I'm speaking into. That's what I'm declaring to change the atmosphere over this city to be that agent of change. Because John the Baptist, when he came, he came to tear up the old ways of religiousness and wrong teaching. And that is what I think is going on in many churches today. Wrong teaching. If the cross isn't being preached and there isn't a good, strong blueprint of the kingdom of heaven being preached into each person to tell them they're an agent of change, then that church is failing and the people are blind and deceived and they'll be sucked into believing that, you know, like I said, this little girl at my daughter's uh, daycare where she works, this teacher, she's, she's sucked into this world now and thinks that she's doing great by watching these movies because the church is not teaching her that it's wrong. The pastor needs to be teaching these things. What is it that John the Baptist did? He was a violent in his preaching. He insulted the ruling authorities. He was shaking the darkness off people's hearts. People were like, oh my goodness, could there be an answer to my prayer here with repentance? Yes. 
The people needed to be ready to accept and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. And that's what you and I are meant to do. We are meant to be readying people's hearts. And if there is an opportunity to lead them to Christ, we need to lead them to Christ. So let's bear the question here. Why should we vote for Donald Trump instead of Kamala Harris in this presidential election? Like I said, our nation is going to be the trigger point. And if we want to see righteousness, a billion soul harvest, we want to see nations turn to Christ, then we need to bring our nation, first of all, into alignment with heaven. We, I have no doubt that Donald Trump will bring great upheaval. People have said that he is a threat to democracy. I believe that he is a threat to the old religious demonic spirit that has been ruling in our nation because don't <coughs> kid yourself. There is an occultic cult that is in charge that has been doing um, so many, uh, what is it, S offers to bail, sacrifices to bail. We saw it at the Paris Olympics. We see it at the White House with transgender drag queens, topless running around. We see it during this Pride Month. We see it pushed in every single school and every curriculum. This kind of darkness needs to change. And then we see the border invasion. We see the dollar and the economy is a mess. Donald Trump will bring, he is a threat to their version of what democracy is. Well, I was thinking like when he said threat to democracy, uh, let's say democracy is like the, the majority is the one who can in charge. It doesn't mean that they know what's right. They can have been deceived. So let's see. So what I think that right now, the United States is the only one that kind of is the nation that can make us hold back this whole the new world order because we have our Second Amendment so that they know that the government can't push over the citizen because they will fight. Well, back. and the Second Second Amendment is our, our right to bear arms. Yeah. Our, so and that's the, the only reason for that one is to to stop like a tyrannical government. That's right. And I think that's the reason why they want to take over the United States because that's the only thing that holds back the whole new world order. That's right. And, and that's that when well, Donald Trump, he doesn't want to give into this global agenda. He wants to go out the other way. So he wants to keep the United States as a nation. That is such a good point. And, that, and that's that what out. we also see right now that they open up the borders because they want to erase like the nationality. So they want to basically just remove the borders the, that's why they open up the borders. And they're trying to let all those illegals vote in this next election. And they're telling people, go ahead and vote even though you're an illegal and, and not a citizen. And um, we need to change the laws so that that no longer is a right of anybody. Yeah, so, so the question is, why does a Democrat don't want to have IDs when you vote? They come up with all the different ideas, but let's say that there's certain of people, they, they can't get hold of ID. But when you go out and ask them, it's more like a racist against them. Like, that they're not smart enough to get ID, but they have ideas. So I think it's just a way for them to be able to kind of cheat in elections. Yeah, it's fraudulent. It's absolutely fraudulent. And so Donald Trump is going to bring, yes, an explosion into that darkness. He's going to bring light into that darkness. And we need to get behind him. For those of you that are like, oh, no, I think Kamala Harris is the one. The problem with her is, number one, she's puppeted by people people that have this dark agenda. She doesn't listen to heaven. I don't see her claiming that God is the one that saves. He is the one that's going to lead. She, she copycats and, mo and basically imitates what Donald Trump's policies are just to get into office. And then as soon as she gets in, she's gonna go back to the way Biden has been doing things and 10 times worse. Yeah, so that's also one thing that if she says she wants to do all those things, she can do it right now, Yeah, but she's not doing it. As a matter of fact, with Biden out of commission the way he is and having his wife in charge, she really should come in as the vice president. Mm -hmm. She should be given the authority to be taken over. Uh, and so she's going to continue the same agenda she's had over the last four years, bringing more chaos and Marxism and spiritual darkness into the United States, and that will spill over worldwide. It's the agenda that, like I said, the Antichrist has. In Matthew 4.16, it says, The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light, and for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. And I truly believe that that is what we're going to see if we elect Donald Trump into office these, in this election. Uh, and I pray that if you are in disagreement with me and you're angry actually at what I'm saying, that you think Kamala is the one that's going to bring the great light, that you will have a revelation. Because that's what we need, a revelation. 
and uh, people don't like to hear that they're wrong. They're prideful. They say, oh no, who do you think you are telling me anything? Well, I'm going to just say the truth, and th that's the way John the Baptist was, and that's the way we each need to be. Speak the truth and bring light into the situation. Because the United States, like I said, is that triggering point. God can use it to bring about his plans and agenda if we will awaken to the tr true spiritual truth uh, that is raging. And we will speak with authority and take up and rise up with our authority, with our prayers, and, and unite our hearts with others. Uh, we will carry great victory, great power because of our faith in Jesus Christ. We will speak words of life and victory. We will see our nation restored to heaven's blueprints if we vote for President Trump. I'm going to just say that straight up. So I'm going to pass the time over to Pastor Nick. If you have any questions, if you want to know how to pray more, if you want to argue with me and talk about this issue, you can contact me. I would like to hear from you and pray with you. But here's Pastor Nick. Thanks, Pastor John. <clears throat> so, uh, so today I want to talk about that Jesus uses the small things to make the impossible. So this was kind of like an opening one. I kind of read this. Passage. Impossible, possible. Well, the impossible. Yeah, possible. Yes. Okay. So I, I missed that word right. <clears throat> and it kind of opened up when I kind of saw this like passage in, a, in this, this kind of light. So I want to go to John 6, 1 to 14. It says, After these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee to uh, Tiberias. Large crowd followed him because, of they saw, because they saw the signs which he was performing on uh, those who were sick. When, then Jesus went up uh, on and up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was near. So that means a lot of Jews they were on the way to Jerusalem because the Passover was coming uh, around the corner. So they were uh, they just traveling on the way to Jerusalem. Uh, so therefore, Jesus, lifting up his eyes and seeing a large crowd was coming to him, said to Philip. Where are we to buy bread so that, <clears throat> so that these may eat? Uh, this he was saying to test him, for he himself knew what he was intending to do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, for everyone to receive a little. So one denarii was equal to one day of income. So not even 200 days of income would be enough to cover for the bread they needed. Not Maybe each, if they cannot use two hundred dollars, maybe each person would get like a crumb. That was kind of like, it, it wouldn't, because there were so many people. So there were maybe around like 40 or 50,000 people in the crowd, uh, because of the number they, they talk about. And then you add kids, and then you add wife, and that kind of stuff. So, so maybe like 40,000 people were in the crowd. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are these for so many people? So I mean, so he could see that this is nothing to feed like this 40,000 people. So this so this was this yeah, <clears throat> this was a young boy. And we often have like at least I had a kind of picture, like you had like a basket with like a normal sized loaf and like a normal sized fish. No, but he was just a little kid, so yeah, he was a his kid. mom packed him a lunch, it would be yeah, a little sandwich. That's more like a snack, probably, because they were probably on their way to Jerusalem, so he just had a snack. <laughs> so it's just like a little thing. Like a snack. So so the Greek word for those here is similar to like a triscuit. Oh, uh, no way. So like, so I, I, I kind of thought about it because I went to Costco like the other day, I saw like a package of triscuit. And it's kind of like a small cookie. So it's I like a little, little square yeah. of nothing. So, and, uh, or like a cracker. So it wasn't like a big thing, it's just more like, it was more like a snack. And the Greek word for a fish means like a small fish. So maybe it was like Some a- sardines and toast. Yeah, so kind of like <laughs> fish on like a cracker. Wow. So you can imagine like Andrew said like, I mean, this is like nothing. How can this be like 40,000 people? No, that would be uh, so, so impossible. So, so, so like most like it was just a snack to kind of- Not even one of them would have been yeah, satisfied no, no. with that kind of food. So it was like a snack for him to, when they kind of on their way to Jerusalem. So I mean, it wasn't like a, what I always picture like a basket, like they have like a basket with like loops and that kind of stuff. No, it was just maybe something he had in his pocket. Well, and how often is it that we in our natural minds like to uh, give the give the natural the benefit of the doubt. Oh, it must have been a large amount yeah. of fish. 
but to have it be so incredibly impossible, talk about the least amount that you could possibly have, but God can work with that mm -hmm. little tiny bit. So then, uh, so, uh, so this might be the reason why Andrew now in verse 9 said, what, what are these for so many people? And, but Jesus hit there and responded like, oh no, what should we do? Like, we only have this small snack. But, it's, uh, but instead he responded, uh, like what we, we start continuing, if you continue to read in verse 10, that Jesus said, have the people sit down. So now I'm pretty sure Andrew was like, okay, we have like this thing and how they're going to feed us to like 40,000 people. So now there was much grass in the place. So the man sat down in number about 5,000. So now we talk about the 5,000 men, but then they have children and their wives. So, that, so it could be like 40, 50,000 people there. <coughs> so, uh, so I can't just imagine like the disciples, maybe they were confused how this tiny snack would feed all like 40,000, 40, 50,000 people. But they obeyed what Jesus told them to do. I think that's really um, amazing, their faith in Christ, that he would be able to do something. Mm -hmm. I guess they had, had watched him turn the water into wine. Uh, they had been observing him, and I guess they would have said, okay. okay. I mean, I would imagine a big, nice spaghetti dinner with some garlic bread and a huge amount of water would be better and more filling for each of these people after three days of not eating. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But they still had the faith to believe that these little crackers and this fish would be enough. Yeah, I mean, uh, they just obeyed what Jesus they told They just them. obeyed, yeah. So then in verse 11, Jesus took the loaves and have, have given thanks. He distributed those to who, who were seated. Likewise, also the fish as much as they wanted. So the Greek word for took, like, uh, from, like, basically he took, like, the, the bread from the, the bread and fish from the, the, uh, the, the kid. So it's, it can also be translated to that he received. So he didn't kind of he didn't grow it, but he received it because the boy kind of gave it to it him. It was like an offering. Yeah. So Jesus won't force anyone to do anything. Well, it's like the widow that just gave the last two pennies she yes. ever had. It's the tiniest little mm -hmm. amount, and yet God can multiply it. Yes. But it's a, it's a so he doesn't force anything, but he receives because of like what I said, the child gave gave it to the boy gave it to him. And it's the same thing for us that he doesn't take anything from us, but it's up to us to give it to him. Where we are, we're not forced to do anything, but we he just want want to receive what we're giving to him. So he wants us to that freely give our lives to him. Amen. He wants us to come to him by our own choice, not That's because right. we are forced to. That's right. Amen. In verse twelve, that they were filled up. Uh, so basically, they were. They were full. Mm -hmm. And then he said to his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments so that nothing will be lost. So we see that the bread and the fish yielded so much that they were filled. Like in the world, it's like they were satisfied. Wow. It's almost like it's almost like you have like after Thanksgiving dinner, like you are <laughs> you are so bloated. So they could were, it could it also be that uh, when Jesus touched this bread and this fish, it was like manna from heaven, where they it was heaven had touched this food so that then it really did satisfy and oftentimes don't we need to pray that our food will satisfy us so that we're not overeating in a gluttonous way mm -hmm. just one more side note there of how amazing this time was yeah but i mean uh, yeah but then they could also fill up the basket right? and they filled yeah. up the basket so that they'll have this disciples have mm -hmm. food for the days to come so then, then in the Verse 13 says, they gather up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments from the five barley loaves, which were left, o left over by the, those who had eaten. So if the manager fill up the 12 baskets, so we imagine like that they were filled up, they were not hungry anymore because there were like 12 baskets left. So it, it was basically, it was kind of multiplying this whole thing. Amen. It's kind of interesting that it doesn't say anything about the fish, it only says anything about the bread, none of us that some some symbolic there I'm not sure well, uh, well Jesus is the bread of life yeah but Amen. I think like maybe fish wouldn't kind of last maybe so Does, sure. it doesn't matter yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. they but had anyway, food so that therefore when the people saw the signs which he had performed they said this is true the prophet who uh, is to come into the world <coughs> so we often have an excuse like the disciples did that in verse 9 that but what are these things for so many people so we think that 
and we are the one who has to kind of do the work and we need to be equipped we need to have the, well the knowledge the the talents to do it to do the work but god is the one that should have the glory not us because Amen. if we do it through our uh, ability then we are the one who can take the glory instead of god mm -hmm. so when we are saved we are not saved because of what we did so there's nothing we can do to get saved that's right it's only because what jesus did he's the one who did the work mm. we can't do anything to kind of measure up to what he did we can't do anything to measure Amen. up to kind of to give like a shall I say a ransom for our lives that's or right. our souls it's only what jesus did so it's only jesus who can take the glory for the salvation and we just have to accept it as a free gift that's right he gives it to us freely and all he wants is our life in return. Yes. So like the small boy who was willing to give up a small package of food, like the snack, uh, to Jesus. And then Jesus multiplied it so it filled almost 50,000 people. Uh, I can imagine like when, when the boy left like uh, with that package maybe that morning, uh, he had no idea that he would... that. He would be used for a miracle mm. that people read about 2,000 years later. That's right. So, I mean, even today, I mean, we know about this boy who gave up uh, his snack and that uh, to feed That's his right. 50,000 people. He's a pretty famous little boy. We don't know his name. No, we don't. He's just there, uh, but he just gave. But he represents yeah. all of us. Yeah. Really, if we just give a little part of ourselves, Jesus can multiply it and use it for his glory and honor. So we can do anything in our own power, but only through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when we read the Bible, we can see how people were used by God to do the impossible. And it wasn't through their own strength, but only through the God's Spirit. In Acts uh, 3, 1 to 10, it says, Now Peter and John were going to the temple in the ninth hour, the hour of the prayer. And a man who, were, who had been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along uh, by whom they used to set down every day at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful in order to beg on, um, alms for those who were entering the temple uh, when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple he began asking to receive alms but Peter along with John fixed his gaze on him and said look at us and he began to give, give them his attention expecting to receive something from them but Peter said I do not possess silver or gold but what I do have, I give to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Woo. So, I mean, we can imagine, oh like, silver and gold would not have healed them. Nope. So what they had was much, much more precious than silver and That's gold. That's right. Amen. And seizing by him, by the right hand, he raised them up. Mm. And immediately his feet and his ankle were strengthened. With a leap, he stood up uh, upright and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them walking and leaping and praising God and all the people saw him walking and praising God and they were taking note of him as being the one who used to sit at the beautiful gate of the temple and begging alms and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what God at what had happened to him amen so it's it kind of like like I mentioned like I mean silver and gold can't save us it's all that the power of Christ. Amen. Like that That's right. And and that's I mean, a really good it's point. It's also like, I mean, uh, that we are meant to, we are walking around with this power. When we have the Holy Spirit, we have this power in us. Mm. So when we are praying and touching people, they will be uh, uh, healed. That's right. And we also have the power to cast out demons, like that's what right. it says in Mark uh, 16. Amen. So, and Peter didn't say, like, in my name, walk up. Mm -mm. He didn't try to take him to like a physician or a doctor. No. He used the name of Jesus. That's right. Since the, there is power to bring mm -hmm. any sickness That's in right. his name. Amen. Amen. Because uh, they were willing to be used by God. The man was healed from being lame. Yes. So, Amen. I mean, they didn't feel like, ah, oh, I don't have the power. But he, they knew that that it's only through the power of Christ. And we are carrying Christ in us. And mm -hmm. through that power... This man can be healed. Amen. So they were willing to be used by God to heal this person. Yes, Bible. Jesus. We need to be open to God to, to be used at a time. That's right. Uh, it could be when you wait at the bus uh, for the people who are waiting at the bus. Uh, it could be at the store. It could be at the gym, in the office. 
maybe you're out walking on the street and you just you pass by some person sitting there. You can God can just use you, just touch the person. So God wants to use us to touch other people. And I think uh, sometimes we think that it's our power that will heal that person, but it's only the power yeah. of God that will heal it. Yes. And we need Amen. to die away from our own flesh and like thinking that I don't have the ability, but no. it's only letting the Holy Spirit work through us. That's right. But to walk in signs and miracles, we need to have the Holy Spirit and be God's children. Mm. The one example we read in Acts 19, 11, uh, 20. Uh, <coughs> no, 11, uh, 11 to 20, okay. God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. Amen. So that the uh, handkerchief and aprons were even carried from his body to, to the sick. And the disease left them and evil spirit went out. So even like what Paul had touched, mm. like the clothing part, right. they used that and uh, and just uh, laid on the people and they were healed. Mm. I have heard other like uh, story about this thing, how someone basically had walked like five days for someone to kind of pray over some clothes. It was like some grandma or something from like her whole family was sick. And she was walking five days, and then she knew that was some kind of conference with some oh, famous kind of preacher or uh, evangelist. And they just they prayed her clothes. And then uh, she walked back five days. And then, as soon as she kind of put on each clothes and each child, they got healed immediately as soon as they kind of put on their clothes. Woo! Glory to God. So it was, uh, so it's, it's, I mean, it's scriptural. We see that it is from the scripture. Uh, and 13, but also some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place and uh, attempted to name over those who had the evil spirit the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Seven sons of uh, Siva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this, and the evil priest answering and said to them, I recognize Jesus and I know about Paul, Amen. but who are you? That's right. So Be are careful. we known by the the demons that I know about him mm -hmm. because we we are children of God. That's right. And the man in whom was the evil spirit leap on them and subdue all of them and overpower them so they fled out the, out of the house naked and wounded. That's right. So we see that uh, we have to be children of God mm -hmm. to be able to 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 basically exercise this uh, this uh, power. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it, when we are, when we uh, ask Jesus into our heart, we are also getting the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that, then we have the Holy Spirit in us. So the seven sons of Sceva, they tried to use Jesus as a formula to cast out demons. But since they were not walking in the authority of Christ, they could not do it. Mm -hmm. Like when the disciples were sent out by Jesus, they were walking in his authority. He had given them authority because they were walking in his name. And they knew him personally. Yes. They, knew, they had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, and that, and they saw a demon cast out, sick getting healed, because they had the authority of Jesus. So like what I mentioned, that when we accept Jesus in their heart, we are getting the Holy Spirit, and we are walking as ambassadors, uh, and then we also walk in, in his authority, like an ambassador yes. has the authority from that nation Amen. to walk, to have that authority as a nation. So we also have the same authority to cast that demon like Jesus said in Mark 16. Uh, that every believer will be able to cast that demon. Not because of our power, but through the authority we have through Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we might not feel like we are equipped to do the work of God, what God has called us to do. But like the boy who offered his snack, if we give ourselves to God and Amen. let him use us, he will be able to do far much more than we could ever imagine. Amen. We need to just step up in faith and do what he has called us to do. Yes. And not rely on our own ability. Even if it might sound like maybe you have like an inclination that go up and pray for that person over there. That's right. Even if it might feel like weird, I can't do that. It's weird. Embarrassing. But that maybe it's, it's the Holy Spirit who tells you to do Take that. Take it on. That, That's that right. The Holy Spirit tells you to do something that you just obey and Amen. you will see a miracle happen. That's right. So that's great. Yes. Lord, we are thankful that it's not through our power, but it's only through you, Lord. It's only through you. Like what we read in this, uh, this passage about this, this, uh, this uh, bread and fish. Mm. That it was just a tiny bit, but only through your power, Lord. 
it was multiplied and it burned yeah. like 40, 50,000 people. Yes, and that's the same thing today, Lord. If we are just following your guidance, Lord, and maybe we'll pray for someone that you tell us to pray, we will see, we will see sight and miracles happen. So help us, Lord, to die away from our own right. thinking, our own, like, uh, yes, reasoning, Lord, Lord yeah. and that you stay guide us and that we will see signs yes, and miracles Jesus. forever, Lord. So just pray, Lord, use us, Lord, use us, Lord, and help us to not that makes us die well, die away from our own uh, reasoning Amen. and our kind of our own uh, stopping what you want to do through us. That's right, Amen. Because we don't think it's possible. Because yeah. we we only think in human terms. But help us just have kingdom uh, thinking, yes, kingdom Lord. mindset. Yes. Amen. That, uh, everything that is in heaven is also in heaven, Lord. Lord, that everything is possible through your power. Thank you, Jesus. Because you are the God of possibility. There is nothing that's impossible. Amen. Lord. Amen. So help us just walk in that uh, authority, that stature, Lord. Yes. And that yes. we are just having our eyes on you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Like what the disciples they have their eyes on you when you yes. are when, we, when you are blessing the spirit and just um, distributing and, and how us just multiply yes. because they have their eyes on you, Lord. Amen. So just pray, Lord, help us to have our eyes on you. Whatever you walk, Lord, that we are just a, an uh, instrument to your hand. And that we are your hands and voice. Amen. To the people around us in the store, in the gym, in the job. Amen. Whatever you have put up for us. Amen. We are as an AE of change, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just lift up and dedicate this day. We just pray for this group. We pray for this nation, Lord, that this nation will come back to you, Lord. This That's right. Amen. Righteous nation, Hallelujah. One nation under God. That's Lord. right. We just pray in your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we're so glad that you joined us this morning. Uh, we are on every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. And you can also find on Vida para las Misiones Internacionales um, platform. And we're grateful to our pastors, Pastor Jack and Ismael Flores, our senior pastors for this honor. Uh, and we're also found on YouTube under Jennifer Moline channel. You can find the message there as well. Uh, and we want you to join us each uh, evening at 7 p.m. this coming uh, next 40 days until October 31st. We're going to be praying every single evening for this nation. Uh, it says in the Bible in 2 Corinthians 7.14 that if my people will pray and cry out, I will heal their land. And we need our land to be healed and we need radical changes. Uh, if we just give a little bit, like 30 minutes each evening, we're going to see this tsunami of change come. We're going to unite our hearts for heaven's plans. And so we just uh, we pray that you will have a great week and that you will join us. And uh, we say goodbye. Bye-bye.